Earlier, we talked about the software development life cycle and how software development is driven by a need or possibly a want. So let me give you a scenario. It is Thanksgiving. You spend Thanksgiving at grandma's house up in the White Mountains, and she lives off the grid. She has solar energy, propane, refrigerator, um, and it's Thanksgiving day. She lives in a very rural setting in the White Mountains, and the closest store uh, that would be open on Thanksgiving probably would be a Circle K that might be two hours away. And obviously very limited things that they would have. So it's Thanksgiving Day, and uh, by the way, this is a composite image. I had to convince my mother this was a Thanksgiving card I sent out back in 2004 with my Rottweiler Reba, and I had to convince her that Reba was not about to steal a Thanksgiving turkey, that I'd put a milk bone up on our island to get her to jump up to look at the milk bone, and then snapped her picture and uh, created everything else in the, in, uh, as far as a composite image in this picture. But back to the story. So it's Thanksgiving Day, you've had your Thanksgiving dinner, and after Thanksgiving dinner is the Family Monopoly Tournament. This happens every year at Thanksgiving afternoon, and it's something that everybody looks forward to. It's a, it's a traditional event. But as you're setting up the game, your Rottweiler zeroes in on the dice, grabs them, and swallows them. What do you do? You can't play Monopoly without dice. Well, I suppose you could put some pieces of paper in a hat and draw those those numbers out of a hat and do it that way. Although the likelihood of Uncle Joe slipping in his own numbers on pieces of paper and cheating, because he does try to cheat every year, is pretty likely. So we want to try to avoid that if we can. So you've got your laptop with you and maybe your phone and you decide that you could create a very quick dice roller for your phone. Now we're going to do this in Visual Studio on the Windows side. Um, normally if we want to do this on a phone we would incorporate a Xamarin project in Visual Studio. We haven't learned to do that yet so our interface is going to be a Windows form. Uh, so it's slightly different than if I was going to put this on a phone but we're going to create this really to run on our PC or our laptop at this point. But with Xamarin and C Sharp, we can create this to run on an Android or an iPhone. And it would, take, it would take me about 20 to 30 minutes to put this together and put it on my phone and pass the phone around and make it work. So here's our storyboard. We're going to have two images of dice. We're going to name them LBL Die, LBL Die 2. We'll have a button named BTN Roll. And we click that button, it's going to randomly generate these two dice. We've been talking about random objects. Now this even goes a little bit better than the dice because for six-year-old Billy, who has a hard time doing math, it will actually tell him what he rolled. It will add the two and five together and say you rolled a seven. And then for Uncle Joe who likes to cheat, we're going to keep track of the rolls in a list box so that when Uncle Joe claims that he rolled a nine that turn before, you can point out, no, you rolled a ten. It was a 6.4. And then we'll have a button to clear this history. So that's our project. Let's go ahead and create it. So I've already set up my Windows project. I called it uh, O3P Dice Roller. O3P being the numbering learning system of this video series. So I have my form. I'm gonna size this as if I was creating this maybe for a phone. So I'm gonna set the size to 480 by 800. And actually since it's getting cut off there, for these purposes, Let's just make it 720. My video is 1280 by 720. Um, this will take up the whole size of the video when we look at this running. And I think because of that, I'm also going to make this down to 400 by 720, just kind of keep a little bit of the phone perspective. So not the normal size we'd maybe use for an iPhone or an Android phone, but you're going to get the idea. We're designing for a phone in this case. All right, I'm going to create the text of my form to be SMC dice roller and I'm going to set the background color and I'm going to use a dark orange. I'm going to create a label up here at the top. I'm not going to bother to name the label because I'm not going to refer to it in code but I'm going to set the auto size to false. I'm going to change the font to something much bigger so let's try bold, maybe 24 point. And then for the text, I'm 
I'm going to put in SMCC dice roller. And I'm going to center that. So there's our title. I've had that a little bit bigger, so I'm going to actually change the font here to a different font face. And in the storyboard, I'd use uh, Sego UI. So I'll choose that. That looks a little bit better to me. Okay, so there's our title. I need to bring in the images of the dice. So it'd be six faces of the dice. You might have those available to you as clip art on your computer, but if not, you can go into something like Photoshop and create these, and that's what I did. Now, if you're following along, the images that I'm using are available in our Canvas course site. If you go into the modules area of Canvas, go down to unit four on repetition structures, and you'll find there towards the bottom a dice 255 by 255 zip file. You can download that, so you can click on it, and then click download, and put it in your downloads folder, and you can unzip it. I'm move my properties over a little bit closer here. So in my toolbox, I'm going to go down to the components and bring in an image list. I'm just going to drop it in my form. It's a non-visible object, so it's going to put it in the system tray. And that image list has properties. I'm going to name it, first of all, IMG Dice. I'm going to set the depth bit to 24-bit. Even though it's really only black and white, it's a good habit to get into because most images you use will be PNGs and JPEGs that have 24-bit color, or it might be a PNG with a transparency, in which case you would want 32-bit. My images are 255 by 255, but my form is only 400 pixels wide. I'm going to have two of them side by side. So giving a little bit of margin and a little bit of space in between, I want to make the size 160 by 160. And Visual Studio will do a nice job of resizing those down. It's okay to resize down. You want to try to avoid resizing up because then images get rastered. So now I'm ready for my collection. I'm going to click on Images and go to Add. And in the dialog box, I'm going to navigate to where I have these images. So there are seven images here. Die 1 through die 6 are the six faces of our die. These are all PNG files. And Rollum, die 0, uh, is just a label called Rollum. I'm going to select all seven of these and say Open. And they come into the members of my image collection. Die 0 is element 0. Die 1 is element 1. All the way through die 6, which is element 6. That makes the math very easy to do. I'm going to say OK. So now we have that image, those images available to us. I need to create the holder for those images, and we're going to use a label for that. So I'm going to create a label. The size of my label is going to be 160, 160. I'm going to get rid of the text. I'll go ahead and set the color to uh, white. And I want to be sure we set the auto size to false. So there's my first die. I'm going to name this LBL die 1. And we're going to connect our image list to this label. So I'm going to scroll down to image list, click the drop down there, and choose IMG dice. And I'm going to choose an in image index. And I want index 0. Okay, I'm going to copy that and paste and get a second one. Position it in place. And what the change we're going to make here is name this one LBL die 2. Now I need a button. We'll create a button underneath. I'll name this one BTN roll. And my text is going to be roll on. Let's make the font a little bit bigger on that. I'll be consistent with my font. Use Sego UI. I want this to be 14. Maybe we'll make it bold. And go a little bit larger. Let's go 18. Okay, that looks pretty good. Then I need a label below that.
And in our storyboard, we labeled this LBL result. Again, I'm going to set the font. Maintain that Sego UI. And we'll do 18 bold on this as well. I'm going to set the auto size to false. My label will be click the Lolum button. The kind of equidistant margins, and I'm going to say I want to make align this to the center. Okay, we have two more objects to create. The next one is a list box. I'm going to drag a list box over here on the bottom left, and we're going to name this LST History. This will contain a record of all of our roles. Scroll bar always visible can be set to false. That's fine. Um, I'm gonna change the I'm gonna change the font on this. And again, we'll stay consistent. And probably 16 is fine. We'll leave it regular. And we want another button. The text of this button is going to be clear history. And we will name it BTN clear history. And I'm going to make this a little bit small. This is a button we don't want to have accidentally hit. So I'll make it small. And in fact, I think I'm just going to make my History a little bit larger. Okay, so there is our interface. We only need to code the Roland button and the Clear History button. And these will both respond to a click event. So I'm just going to double click on Roland. Get rid of my properties. I'm going to create a random object as a class level. We'll call it RND role. It's going to equal a new random object. And that's a constructor, so I need parentheses, it's a method, and my semicolon. Somehow I got rid of my P in public and fix that. Okay, so then at our button, we're going to create two integer variables called die1 and die2. And total. Total will be the combination of die one plus die two. Die one is going to equal rnd roll dot next, and we're going to get an integer between zero and six. But we'll add one to that. Actually, gives us zero, zero through five. Six is exclusive. So the next six gives us zero through five. Adding one will give us one through six. And this should be an equal sign. We can do the same thing for die two. That will roll our two dice. Our total then will equal die one plus die two. Okay, we want to change the images in our labels. So LBL die one dot image index equals die one and LDL die two dot image index equals die two LBL result dot text is going to equal you rolled a we're going to concatenate to that our value of total taken to a two string. And the last thing to do is add our history. 
I'm going to create a string variable called result. It's going to equal die one dot two string. We'll concatenate a space plus space as a literal string, and then die two dot two string, and concatenate to that a space equals space. And then finally, we'll concatenate the value of total converted to a string value. And then finally, our LST history list box. We're going to take the atoms and we're going to insert at index is zero, so it's at the very beginning the value of result. Now obviously I could have avoided creating a result uh, string and just done all my concatenation right here instead. That'd be another option. I think it's a little bit cleaner to create the, the, the string first and then just put it in here. That will generate our random numbers, roll our dice, and give us the total and the history. Let's just test that. Here's my application. I'm going to click roll them. And I rolled a 2 and a 2 and told 2 plus 2 equals 4. I rolled a 4. Click again. 4 plus 5 is 9. So you can see how the most recent roll is at the very top of the page. I rolled 4 and 5 again. 3 and 6. 4 and 2. 1 and 3 and so forth. Now last thing we need to do is just create this button for clearing the history. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to double click on that button. We'll do this with a dialog result. I'm going to verify they want to um, clear the history. I'm going to call it verify equals message box dot show. Are you sure you want to clear the history? I'm going to drop down the next line. Our title will be please confirm. And then my message box buttons will be yes, no, cancel. So there's our message box. If verify is equal to dialog result dot yes so I'm going to take LST history as our list box I'm going to go to the items collection and run the clear method which will empty out the contents all right let's test that so we're going to roll several rolls here and if I click clear history and I say no, nothing happens. Clear history. And I say cancel, nothing happens. But if I clear history and then respond yes, it clears that and I can begin with fresh rolls. Obviously, we get a whole bunch of rolls, then that scroll bar will show up and we can scroll through the list of rolls if we need to. And that is our dice roller project using random object and incorporating a list box.